all of us who are involved in technology guidance know that the field of technology uh, has certain problems and all of us are trying to improve it. So what has happened with biomatrix theory is it has given special attention to uh, a, a new view of technology. And the old view is, the conventional view, is that we have diversified academic frameworks. We all know that. It is loosely organized and there is no formal unifying formats. Uh, in fact, uh, science and technology policy and engineering and technology management issues do not have a consistent layout. With the new theory of technology, which we suggest that we use, there is a single academic framework. The whole field is tightly organized, it's based on formal unifying formats, and it's a science and technology policy issues and engineering and technology management issues have a consistent layout. So we are offering these as a way of helping those who wish to improve technological knowledge as certain guidelines. Now, one of the things to illustrate this is to give it an example. The example that we will be using is the energy supply chain. And the format that we use from the core theory of technology is the functionality grid. And the functionality grid divides all of technologies into nine major categories and these are defined in terms of the outputs, matter, energy, information and in terms of the actions required to get those outputs, processing, transporting and storing. So we will break the energy supply chain down into three links called processing, transporting and storing and we start with process. Here we can see that there are a number of outputs that can be generated uh, and in, at the matter level. I have the examples here of extraction, liquefaction, gasification. And each of these can be analyzed into more detail and of course there are only three of about 20 possibilities but we know how they fit into the overall scheme now. Uh, the energy output, we could analyze the ingesting of fossil fuels, the ingesting of solar heat, and the use of wind turbines. And again, those are three examples, and we have a whole host, perhaps 20 examples in, in real life when we analyze the energy supply chain. And then, of course, uh, we mustn't forget the informational aspect because uh, in, in the informational aspect helps us to integrate grid management and bring them all together. Um, and that is as far as we can go with analyzing output uh, and let's move on to the next one, analyzing transportation. The next phase in the energy supply ch chain is transportation. You will recall that there are three phases, processing, transporting and storing. We are now looking at transporting. Transporting can be applied to matter transport and we can look at the development of trains and how they are coming along, the development of ships and how they are coming along, and the development of pipelines. And again, I'm choosing three examples out of possibly 15 or so. And looking at the output of energy in the form of electricity, uh, we, we can see uh, this can be transported by means of wires, uh, it can be transported by means of cables, and it can be transported by means of immaterial channels, which is a whole new challenge for us and really dispenses with material connections. And then when we look at the information side of it, uh, we can look at co-transmission 
in other words bringing the same wire to bring both energy and information and we are already using this in the house and then the other example would be Y-tricity. Y-tricity is really the use of very subtle energy emanations at, at, at the level of, of information emanations but to transmit electricity and again uh, these are examples of things that can be examined and we've only chosen two and there are 15 or so in practice. The final phase in the energy supply chain is stores and here again we apply the concept to matter, energy and information. If we store and we think of you are storing material things, you can think of stockpiles, you can think of tanks in the sense of, of uh, fuel containers and you can think of very specific gas containers. And all of those are examples of a multiple form of material storage. Uh, when you come to the storage of, of energy itself, it is far, far more difficult. And what we have seen is a very slow development in the development of batteries. Uh, they are there, we know they are there, but their growth is very slow. And then there, another example would be pumped storage, where we pump water up a hill, let it run down to generate electricity. And then, of course, the interesting thing in energy storage is supermagnetic energy stores, where we put the energy into a coil, and the coil just keeps on running around. And so you put in 100% electricity, and eventually you take out 98% and it's just kept in, in electrical format. Uh, and there are other promises there as well. And I think really in energy storage, we are probably going to see the most important uh, developments uh, uh, available. Uh, when we get to the information uh, uh, stores, think of linked intelligent energy stores. So you have the whole number of energy stores and you link them with software and that software becomes intelligent so that it helps you optimize this, the storage pattern. And that is then the third level uh, in this energy supply chain and uh, we will look at the summary of all of these in the next section. The question that comes up now is where do we use this information that we have been just sharing and the, it helps us in understanding the total picture. That is so important. But the same analysis can be done for the individual segments that we mentioned and going into them deeper. Now, the question that you ask is, where do I get this information? There's easy access available. First of all, there's a book, Technology, a Unifying Code, which was came out in 2004. And recently, we tried a very significant experiment by putting technology, a core theory, as eight essays on LinkedIn. And these are available for public scrutiny. Uh, they're very short and they tell you how to do things. Uh, technology of core theory, eight essays on LinkedIn, and the web, and, uh, the web reference is given in the slides. Um, question. What are we going to do with all of this? The purpose is to help professionals improve technology guidance. The steps that you need to take are three. Become technology conversant. Develop a sense of technological destiny. And learn the essentials of a core theory of technology. And this should really expand your ability in technology guidance and fit in with what is happening in biomatrix theory. Um, that is a very valid and viable question. Uh, what 
we have done in discussing uh, the theme so far is just to go to a unifying concept, uh, w looking at the totality of technology as such. Of course, it has an input side, of course it has an output side, and that is an important part of the new core theory of technology, is not that you talk about the environmentalists when talking about using natural resources and talk about the environmentalists when you are polluting the environment. That becomes part of the holistic view of technology. That, that is your responsibility. Uh, so the core theory of technology does expand to include those. The, uh, the advantage of the functionality grid and the functionality approach is that you can go into immense detail, immense historical detail and immense detail in trying to anticipate what is going to happen. And the, what you use there are functional performance metrics. So for each of the, uh, of the functional categories, you can develop a series of metrics, they are well known, and you can actually measure the rate of technological progress historically, and you can then estimate the rate of progress into the future, which really adds uh, a, 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 an immense amount of detail and an immense amount of understanding technological evolution at the detailed level. The question that comes up frequently is what are the role of experts in this whole exercise? And the point here is that this is a unifying exercise. It is an exercise in integrating expertise uh, and so using the individual knowledge of individual experts, you place this knowledge all together. And that is the important part, because up to now, uh, the work that has been done in technology knowledge has always omitted the integrating point of view.